All right, so, so I've got this theory that with special church services like this, um, you know, they're sp- supposed to appeal to everyone. Like Easter, there's a very important story there. It's sort of like the crux of our faith. But really, it's for the little kids hunting for Easter eggs, right? And then so for the midnight service tonight, it's for the disillusioned college students that are being forced to go to church. That service is for them. This service right now, it's not for the people who've been going to church every Sunday throughout the whole year, the people who decorated the church or whatnot. It's for those of you who are here for the first time or maybe the first time since last Christmas. And we are glad to have you back. And the more anxiety you have about the noise your children are making, the more appropriate your presence is. And then see, the thing is, is right now, in this very moment, Uh, There's probably more people who don't know what they're doing in church than people who are used to our rhythm. And that is our superpower. Everything can go wrong, and as long as we do it slowly and pretend like we know what we're doing, you guys are going to think we did just fine. And then so, this morning, it was an opposite sort of story. It was really quite funny. So this is a special Christmas Eve service. Uh, or Sunday, uh, because Christmas Eve is on Sunday. That only happens once every seven years. So I told Kate to take the morning off. Kate is our amazing organist. So for the first time since I've been here, we've had two spoken services, no music on Sunday morning. And there's a few of you who went this morning and are back here this evening. I give you all the gold stars. Um, and then, but the thing is, is everyone there is among the crowd that knows how things are supposed to happen. When we start singing the doxology, most of you don't even know what that is, you stand up and you get ready to get ready for Holy Eucharist. And when the fraction anthem goes on, I fill up the rest of the little cups. Everyone did everything wrong. Without our musical cues, we were completely lost. We could not go with the flow, and it was awkward. It was still a good and beautiful and holy thing, but we were lost because we were stuck in our routines. And the reason that those of you who have brought your wild children in tow, why this service is for you, is because the coming of God in the world was not marked by all of the priests marching down from the temple who had spent their lives studying this stuff, reading the scrolls of the prophets. It wasn't marked by all of the people who made it their life's work to understand and predict and to quantify how God is supposed to work. It was marked by people who live out in the fields, who probably didn't make it to temple very often. And the thing is, is shepherds just aren't going to leave their sheep in the fields. Like you, they brought a whole bunch of chaos with them. And then the thing is, in the midst of all of that chaos, they were doing exactly what they were supposed to do, which is to bear witness to this new thing happening. At this part in the story, there is no Sermon on the Mount. At this part of the story, there is no angry Jesus turning over uh, tables in the temple. At this part of the story, there is no cross resurrection and our hope in everlasting life. Instead, there is just a newborn child lying in a manger with a whole bunch of grisly looking shepherds that probably smell very bad bearing witness. And then so the very fact that your children may be experiencing this story in this setting for the first time from the ground up, flipping through the hymnals and the prayer books, doing everything wrong, at least you're afraid they're doing everything wrong. Really, they're doing everything right. Because not if, but when things get messed up in this service, They'll be completely oblivious and they'll be able to hear and feel the story while me and our vergers and uh, probably the altar guild will be cringing deep down inside. And for us in that moment, the narrative will pause and we'll leave this holy place for just a moment until we can get recentered. So if you don't know what you're doing this Christmas Eve, this Holy Sunday, you are in the right place. 
and we need you desperately because we have been spending too much tr time getting ready in the ways that we think we need to be ready. When all we have to do is quiet our minds, experience church from the ground up in all of its glory and splendor, and know that something new has happened, and all we must do is bear witness. So thank you for being here. Amen.